Please listen very carefully as we uh, read this passage of the scripture. Uh, beginning at verse 1, we're going to read down through the 14 verses. Verse 1 says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints which are in Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. That we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise together, which, which is, is the, the earnest of our inheritance, inheritance until the redemption of the, of the purchased possession unto the, the praise of, his, of glory. his glory. Praise the Lord. Together, Father, we thank you again for the word of God. I ask, Lord, that it will come alive, O oh God, and be made real to us today. Let our hearts be open, Lord, that the life of Jesus Christ will be imparted, O oh God, into areas where we have need of today. Bless us. Thank you for bringing us together again. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. amen. God bless you. You may be seated. God's will and purposes. God's will and purposes. We want God's will for our individual lives and for our lives collectively because in the end when we stand before God, he will begin to declare blessings because we followed through and obeyed his will or of course departure for those that did not, does not know Jesus Christ. So it's a blessing to know and be committed to understanding and obeying his will. So we're talking a bit about God's will and purpose now. This, the, the thing that God did for us is spelled out here uh, briefly in the book of Ephesians, our salvation. And it talks about how the father... Uh, it was in the mind of the Father, and it was his plan to redeem us, to save us. And uh, it tells about the specific work of God, the Father, chosen. We were chosen. And the specific work of Jesus, redemption. And also the specific work of the Holy Spirit sealed us and enabling us to inherit the promises of God. Chosen by the Father, say it with me. Redeemed by the Son. And sealed by the Holy Spirit. Okay, can you give God a praise? Hallelujah. Glory to God. As I was reading these verses here, the first thing that the Holy Spirit just kind of grabbed my attention 
was in verse 10. Verse 9, verse 8 said, Wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, something that had to be revealed in time, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, what is that? That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Aren't you glad you're a part of that gathering? That is just something to just thank God for. And he first grabbed my attention so that we could see the will of God, the Father. It was God's will. And all of we that are saved, if you're not saved, then you can be by the grace of God, by receiving Jesus. But all, all of us that are here today are a part of this redeemed family. We did not choose to redeem ourselves because we could not. It was the Father's plan. And so to be a part of this plan is something that we are eternally grateful for. Or we should be, isn't that right? So in the fullness of time, this was his plan now that he might gather together in one all things in Christ. So now in Ephesians chapter 3, follow with me now. He says in verse 2, Paul says again, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, Lord, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery, as I wrote a full and few words, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Then out of the parenthesis, he says, which in other, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. What, do you, what is that? That the Gentiles, non-Jews, should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the vehicle of the gospel. Isn't that right? Look at somebody say, it's important to tell others about the good news. Hallelujah. Amen. So here, Paul is writing and letting the Gentiles know, verse 1 in chapter 2 says, and you have the quickened or made alive who were dead. It is a blessing that God made us alive. He quickened us. And... Uh, Hebrews chapter 1 talks about God who in sundry times and in divers manners speak unto the fathers by the prophets hath in these last days spoken to us by his son whom he hath appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image or the direct image of his person, speaking of God the Father, and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. He was made heir. He's the heir. Jesus Christ is the heir. Now remember uh, the parable that Jesus spake and was sharing about uh, he sent the son, he sent his heir, and he said, oh, they'll cherish him. But they beat him and this kind of thing, said the inheritance may be ours. But Jesus is the heir, uh, and everything is through and by him. So now let, let's look again at the book of Colossians chapter 1 and see about Jesus, this heir. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12, giving thanks to the Father, which hath made us meet or fit to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom. Somebody say kingdom. 
of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Now, I'm going to read this, this verse 15, but I'll come back to it. Who is the image, somebody say image, of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. All right. Now, Revelation chapter 11. All right, verse 15. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms, plural, of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. This is the future, what's going to happen. And you and I are a part of the plan of God. So when things get bad and difficult and the focus gets blurred, remember your end. Yes. Remember that the best is yet to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So this is the mystery, the unfolding truth of God's will and purpose for you and I. Uh, verse 4 tells us that the Father has chosen us. Somebody say chosen. Chosen, in this word here, it means to pick out or choose, to pick or choose out for oneself. Get my specs here. Listen carefully to this. The word is used of God choosing out Israel from among all nations to be the channel. Somebody say channel. Yeah. Through which he will bring salvation to all those in those other nations who will receive it. This is what the word it implies to pick or choose out for oneself. And one of the implications, or it's the same as the word that's used of God choosing out Israel from among all nations to be the channel through which he'll bring salvation to all those in these other nations who receive it. So God chose Israel to be the vehicle or the channel for him to speak and win others to himself. So the same thing individually when God chooses us, he chooses us to be channels, conduits, instruments to bring others to tell the redemptive message of Jesus Christ so that others might be saved. So the blessing of being chosen must not just stop with the idea of being selected. Isn't that right? It's a selected with a purpose in mind. Now the other part of this being chosen is the idea of taking or setting apart something for oneself. God chose us for himself. We are bought with a price. Paul said, get this, Ye are not your own. Ye 
ye are bought with a price. He further says, therefore, glorify God in your body. Are you with me? And in your mind, we have been purchased from the slave market. You say, what kind of slave market? We were slaves to sin. Hallelujah. And God saw the slavery and the bondage that we were in. And out of his great mercy and out of the good pleasure of his own will, he saved us. The last part of this chosen means the act of choosing a person or thing for a definite object or call. Choosing for a call goes right in line with what we said earlier about them choosing Israel. So we walk worthy of this calling in a humble manner, right? According to what Paul said in Ephesians. So, chosen. We've been chosen, but uh, uh, as I was looking up the, the, the definition, it says no, no, no um, special preeminence or prominence should be given to the thing selected. Are y'all with me? But to the selector. Did you get that? <laughs> It, it, it's not the object that you put emphasis on. It's the one that chose the object for its divine purpose. Isn't that right? Yeah. Hallelujah. Isn't it easy sometimes we get caught up in the object and we miss the selector, the one that selected us. And anytime you get mixed up like that, something is going awry. Isn't that right? <laughs> It was God's dealing. Now, 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 the Bible says we were predestinated, predetermined, or marked out beforehand. And God saw out of his great, vast omnipotence and omniscience, he saw humankind, he saw the gospel being preached, and he saw the ones who would respond. And all of this great mind and wisdom of God. So he says, for those that will believe, I've got a purpose for them. He marked out beforehand the purpose, hallelujah, and the blessings for those that would receive him. Hallelujah, Jesus. And I feel so privileged and you should feel so privileged to be selected or chosen for the Father's purpose and chosen for his, own, for his own self. He calls us to himself. And so it is a blessing to be called and selected and chosen. Now the Bible says again that we were predetermined, predestinated for a purpose. Verse 5, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he had made us accepted in the beloved. So the writer says that God's intent is to make us a monument of his powerful loving grace. So when people see you and I and what God took the nothingness of our lives and made something so beautiful in our lives that people the, to the principalities and powers will marvel and said, oh, the wisdom of God. 
God has a plan and a purpose for you and I. So now, again, he said, predestinated us to the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Six says, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Now, over here in verse 10, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom, talking about Christ, also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated, here's that word again, according to the purpose of him who does what he want to do, or works all things after the counsel of his own will. Same difference. All right? According to him who works all things after the counsel of his own will, what? That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. So we were predestined by God for a divine purpose. He pre he's called us out among the heathen. He called us out and he put his divine spirit in us. And that spirit that he put in us is holy. The spirit that he put in us is unselfish. The spirit that he put in us um, is all-knowing. So God put himself, he put his breath, his life again into you and I like in the beginning when he blew breath into our nostrils um, and we became a living soul. Nothing took place until the breath of God breathed through our nostrils. And when he breathed through our nostrils, something took place uh, Life came, hallelujah, and hallelujah. Although man fell, here again he says, and you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins where in times past you walked according to the course of this world fallen according to the prince of the power of the air under the sway and the slavery of sin and Satan. We couldn't help ourselves, but... God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were trapped, alienated, dead, sick, in sin, and in bondage to the evil oppressor, he has quickened us. He made us alive by his divine power. He loosed us from the chains of darkness only he could do hallelujah 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 he broke the power of the slave master and brought us into a relationship somebody say relationship with the holy kind just and gracious God who loves us forgives us sees the finished product you look at yourself, you struggle every day with how you are and what you can't do and what you can't. But God sees what he can do in you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we were predestinated. We were chosen of God. Hallelujah. What was the grounds of predestination? What was God's motive for predetermining us? It was a good pleasure of his will. He didn't struggle with this thing. It was a good pleasure of his will. He was so pleased to bring us out of darkness. And the Bible says, uh, for a good man, some would scarcely die. Or... For one that is a righteous person, maybe perhaps somebody would die, but God demonstrated his love toward us while we were sinners, enemies, alienated from the life of God. He died for us. What kind of love is that? 
that a man will love his enemies and go to the cross for his enemies. If a man says God doesn't love me, then he doesn't understand Calvary. If a man says God doesn't care for me, then he doesn't understand the cross. Hallelujah. Chosen us. Hallelujah. And the Bible says it's by grace you have been saved. You had nothing. I had nothing to offer him. The songwriter says all I had to offer him was brokenness and strife. But he made something beautiful out of my life. It is by grace you have been saved. Hallelujah. It is the marvelous grace of God. That's why the principalities and powers didn't understand this about the God. Hallelujah. That they thought they knew. He had so much love. And he had so much grace for humanity. He could have condemned us to death and says, just get rid of them. They'll never amount to anything that keeps failing. But he didn't say that. He didn't say that. Hallelujah. He said, Father, prepare me a body. And I'll go. And I'll offer my life so that they may live. Father says, nobody can pay this price. And Jesus says, Father, I'll go. I'll go. Just prepare me a body. And I'll go. Hallelujah. I will go, he said. It is Jesus. And now, for somebody that does this for you and I, do you think he needs to beg us to thank him and praise him? I don't think so. I believe. Hallelujah. And once we, the more we understand what God has done, something automatic will take place on the inside of us. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah. Uh, if somebody gives, hallelujah, if you're in financial uh, distress, bankrupt and about to lose everything, and all of a sudden somebody comes by, and writes you a check that will take you completely out of your debts and, and have money to spare it over, uh, would you remember to say, you know, uh, I don't know if I, you know, the only thing that's in your soul as a result of it. All I know, I was in bondage. All I know, this financial stuff was wearing me down, uh, and that person came and delivered me. That's what Jesus did for us. So what would, should be the response? Gratitude. Gratitude. Thank you, Lord. I am forever grateful. I'm forever grateful for what you've done, Lord. Hallelujah. And, 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 and so, so sometimes God, each, each time we come together, he has to remind us of something that should come automatically. The Bible says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. And Johnny said, well, Lord, you don't know, you don't know what I'm going through. Sally says, God, uh, yeah, if you take care of this problem, yeah, then I'll praise him. And Sue says, oh, God, the things ain't too good for me. Hallelujah. But there is one called Joe that said, you know what? I'll never forget what he's done for me. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's not asking. You see, he's not asking for something that is not his. He, 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 he doesn't want something that doesn't belong to him. You know, give him what belongs to him. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and that's why the Bible talks about wisdom. Wisdom is when we are grateful. Somebody said, no, if you just deliver me out of that, then I'll be grateful. But you see, you got it wrong. 
You, you, you can't wait. You're saying, I, I don't really understand it. All I know is what I'm feeling is not good. But what God is saying, the just shall live by faith. You, you, you can't wait until you feel this thing. You, you can't wait, hallelujah. But you've got to do it in faith, realizing what God has already done. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Glory to God. Ah, glory to God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, glory to God. Thank you. You, 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 you got to know a little something about the one you're serving, you see. Uh, he, he, he's so full of glory. And, and, and you, you know the story when Moses wanted, got, got, got spiritual and wanted to see his glory. He said, you, you, you can't take what you want to see. But I tell you what I'll do, you'll see the remains when I pass by you. The Bible says God is so good. He's so good. So he let his goodness pass by Moses. And so Moses... His hand was over him, so Moses, you know, was muffled. He couldn't give him the praise, so God had to, uh, uh, he said, the Lord, the Lord God, abundant in goodness and truth. But you see, when God passed by, somebody's got to praise him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's why when Jesus revealed his identity and he was in the triumphant entry into Jerusalem, he began to go and then the disciples didn't understand him nor the times. Lord, make those kids shut up. You hear them crying out to you? And Jesus said, you, you, you don't understand. If, if they shut up, if they shut up at a time when I'm passing by, then I got to create something to praise me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You see, it's once we get this thing, half of our troubles are going to be over. But God is to be honored. God is to be praised. Boy, that thing took me a long time. I couldn't understand why God wanted me to praise him even when things didn't go right. God is like he was saying, son, I don't want you walking by, by sight. The blessings are in the spiritual realm by faith. And so I, I, I struggled for a long time and I believe there may be someone in here now you're still in the realm of sight and feeling and, and God said I, I, I still want to bless you I still want to bless you but, I'm, but you got to know this without faith it's impossible to please him no matter how much you no matter what is going on without faith God can't do a thing about it. Somebody said, oh, God ain't hear me. God said, without faith, it's impossible to please him. When you come to God, you got to know that he exists and he's the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Somebody said, I've been praying for 20 years. I've been praying for 15 years. But, 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 now, let me tell you what God said. I said, God... If we're praying for a long time and we're not seeing the answer, what, what, what is the, the, the real problem? And God said, said, one is selfishness. Selfish prayer. Prayer that don't necessarily benefit the kingdom. And then he said, the second thing is unforgiveness. He said, I told people that if, I, if we don't forgive, he can't do anything. Somebody's trying to get God to change his word for their situation. Look at somebody say, it won't, it won't happen. So now, when I'm praying now, if God, if I'm praying in sincerity, and then I say, God, is there anything obstructing my prayers? If I'm serious, God going to tell me. Isn't that right? 
Look at somebody say, but if you're not serious, don't ask now. <laughs> Ain't that right? Come on, give God some praise. <laughs> I want you to hold your seatbelt. Here's what God said. He said, some of them are angry at me. He said, they have unforgiveness toward me. Some of them got it against him. And so, you know, I, I've been there now. I, I know what that's like. And I remember one day, and, and I'm not there now, thank you, Jesus. But I remember going through, and I couldn't figure out why God was allowing this. So I'm looking at my righteousness. No, no, God, I mean, you, you, you got a pretty good person here, whether you know it or not. Come on, y'all, now, I'm, I'm talking to somebody here. Now, we ain't going to say it with our mouth, but that's how we acted, right? You know, sometimes they have... You, you ought to be grateful for, you know, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm there, you know, I'm in that place, you know, and so God ain't blessing like he's supposed to be as far as I was concerned, so then I'm, so after a while, I'm, I'm getting an attitude with God, you know, it was subtle, now, because I, you know, I naturally ain't going to tell him I got an attitude against because of that, but the Bible says man looks on the outward and God looks on, look at someone say he already saw it, so finally, he told me. Now, I don't know why it took so long for him to tell me. I think. I think I probably wasn't too open for it. Or I was busy trying to tell him how good I was. But, you know, God had to deal with this. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And so he got me to the place where I said, no, 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 there's no goodness in me. There's, there's no goodness in me. There's nothing in me that's valuable except the Christ. So I had to deal with that, and finally, God, I let it go. I says, God, you're the master. You are not doing this to me. You're not doing this to me. And I had to be honest and allow Jesus to speak to me, and I confessed, I repented. He says, God, I am so sorry for charging you with what somewhere between me and the devil has done to myself. And God, after a certain time of repentance, he so quickly came. It was like, I don't change. I don't change. When the principles that are lined in my word are honored by faith, I'm just going to work. Yeah. That's just all there is to it. So, some, if you feel like you've been praying for years and like the heavens of brass, and God just looked like he's up there, uh, look like, uh, 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 I remember one man D.L. Baker came and preached one time and, and I was going through then and he, and he hauled off and I, I feel like he, the spirit came over and he said, do you think God is up there lying? I said, whoa. <laughs> I was frustrated. But I knew that that came from the spirit. Yeah. And I said, God, forgive me. God, forgive me. I was walking by sight and feeling. And God so eagerly wanted to pull us out. And today I'm talking to somebody. It's not a shame to have anger against God, but it is a shame when we know it and don't want to do nothing about it. That's a shame. Because we have the spirit of obedience, right? Through the blood of sprinkling. So we are God's children. So anyway, uh, let me bring this on down to a conclusion. So we were chosen, predestined, and blessed. And Jesus, the God-man, 
was the direct, clearest image of the Father, right? He was man, but he was God, and in his God, man, he was the direct image of the Father. Are you with me? All right. Now, let me say what the Bible says. I'm going back to Colossians 1.15. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. All right? God's original plan for humanity. Let us make man in our image after our likeness, right? This is, this is God's original plan. You know the story of what happened to the fall. But I want you to look at Romans chapter 8. It doesn't stop there. He says, verse 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Look at this verse. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be what? Conformed to the image of of his son. Let me read it again. To be conformed, fashioned to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at here. I want you to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Hallelujah. Paul said when he was comparing his ministry and the, and the ministry of the apostles with Moses' ministry. And he made it clear that the ministry that Moses had was a ministry of condemnation. It was the ministry of the letter of the law. Are you with me? And the best that God had in this ministry of condemnation was to write his word upon stones. Are you with me? That was the best that he had. But the Bible says when Paul making the comparison, he said, Moses... When he came from the presence of God, his face was shining and Moses knew that this glory was not going to be long. It was going to eventually just fade right away. So Moses did not want them to see the fading glory. Somebody say the fading glory. Hallelujah, but it signified the ministry of condemnation was fading into nothingness. And Paul said, but we have the ministry of reconciliation and the spirit, the, the law of the letter kills, it condemns. Hallelujah, but he said, but the spirit gives life. And so now God is giving life to you and I. And when you're hearing this word, life is coming. And listen, it's not no longer written uh, uh, on tablets of stone of the word of God, but he said it shall come to pass um, that the word shall be in your heart. Come on, y'all. Now look what God's got to deal with now. He's got to deal with the letter or the word of God in your heart. And then, not only that, but the Bible says in Galatians 4, 6, in the fullness of the time, God sent forth his son. Into where? Into our hearts. Everybody remember that? And if the spirit of Jesus 
He is in us. And Jesus is the image of the Father. That Spirit of God is working to produce the same image of God in us. Hallelujah. Now look what he said in, in chapter 3. Now the Lord is that spirit. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Verse 18, but we all with open face or unveiled face. Paul is comparing his ministry with the ministry of Moses. He said, in other words, Moses, that glory was, that was on Moses was fading. And so he had to veil his faith. But he said, but we, we don't veil our faces. We don't veil our faces because what we got to offer, hallelujah, will not fade. Glory to God. And, that's, and so he said, but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of the Lord. God is working in you whether you can see it or not. God is changing you and I. He's changing us in the ways that he doesn't like. He's changing us and he's taking out the old to bring in the new. He's conforming us into the image of his son. This is the will of God. Go so look at somebody and say, it's not what I want. It's what God wants. Now see, now, 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 now listen, saints. And I'm bringing this to a conclusion. I don't want to spend my whole life bucking and rebelling against what God wants. God said to Paul, it is hard for you, Paul, to kick against the pricks. He said, who are you, Lord? What will you have me to do? I'm Jesus of Nazareth. Then he gave him instructions like God's given us instructions. And I'm bringing this to a conclusion. He's bringing us instructions. Isn't that right? Now listen, in conclusion, God is, is, is working in you and I. And what I believe God was saying is that many are going through. And I'm on TV, so I'm going to say this. And he said, especially his leaders, he is working something out and working something in. That's what God said. He's working in his leaders now. So if you are a leader, if you're going through, says, well, I'm a leader. Hallelujah. Because God is going to have his way. The Bible says he works all things after the counsel of his own will. He doesn't have to ask me, say, well, Larry, Larry can, I, can, I, can I do this? In, can I do this in you? Because, I, because it's necessary. He does not seek my permission, right? It is the will of God. But thank God this is blessed because when we stand before God, we don't have to be worried about what he's going to say about our lives. And because through the trials and the tribulations, they begin to work the love of God. The love. Don't you just love it? Because we gotta be like him. We gotta be like him. So in conclusion, what are you saying? The will and the purposes of God. We're chosen, redeemed, and we're sealed. Let me say a word or two about that seal before I go. Sealed. Sealed. Verse 13 says we're sealed, right? The Holy Spirit actually places a seal of ownership upon us. It's a seal of ownership. In the old days, letters were stamped with a seal. 
pagan cults stamped their devotees with seals in the form of tattoos. A seal indicated a document was genuine and authentic. They used to brand cattle, and they still do, right? And if a cattle owner has a lot of cattle, sometimes cattle would get out. So what they would do is brand them with their brand. So that should they get out and go astray and wander, they got the brand of the owner there. That's, are are y'all with me? Yeah. And, 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 and in the universities, they have a seal. And that seal, in order to make a certificate or diploma authentic and genuine, the university seal has to be on it. Otherwise, it's just a piece of paper. Seal. So when we get saved or when we believe in God, we must be sealed. Isn't that right? The seal is an indication of being owned by God. No matter where you go and what you're doing and so on, that seal is on you. You are God's child and you are a genuine Christian. Hallelujah. No matter what the devil tells you. Isn't that right? And then he says uh, to the earnest, he's the earnest, which is the same as a down payment, as a pledge that the full payment will be given when Jesus returns to earth. A guarantee that God will consummate all his promises to us when the proper time comes. If you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit, you ought to start praising the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't care what devil comes to you to lie to you and try to make you feel like this ain't going to happen and that's not going to happen and you're not this with God and you and God doesn't love you and you don't belong to God if you have been sealed. The Bible says the Lord knows them that are his. Isn't that right? Let's give God some praise now. You've been saved, been chosen, you've been redeemed. And you've been sealed by the power of God. If that don't make you happy, I don't know what can make you happy. Hallelujah, you belong to God. I don't care what the devil says, you belong to God. I don't care how many trials you're going through. You belong to God. And God has set his love upon you today. Can you stand up and let's give God some praise in this house. He's deserving of praise. Hallelujah. He's deserving of praise. He's deserving of praise. He's deserving of praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I belong to God. You belong to God. You've been sealed by God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord and sealed by the Lord. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to tell you these two, three things then we're done. The fall, the fall of man was foreknown. Are you with me? It was anticipated and prepared for. Are you with me? So, like the fall, the sacrifice, that is Christ, was foreknown and provided for. You see it with me? And finally, the redeemed, the people of God, were foreknown and chosen. Hallelujah. <laughs> the Lord said, he said this, he says, he said, God can do anything. He said, our problem is unbelief. <laughs> he says, it's only unbelief that causes us to not obey him and not to trust in his wisdom. Only unbelief. So he said, God, the problem is not God. He can do anything. Let me remind you of something. God, Jesus took two fish and five loaves of bread. 
and he fed 20 plus thousand, 5,000 men plus women and children. Now, can you try to compute this now? Two fish, five loaves of bread, feed 20 plus thousand people and have seven to 12 baskets left over. I mean, can, can, you, can you deal with that? He turns water into wine. He, he tells Peter, who, who wanted to know if he could do what Jesus did when he saw him walking on the water, said, if this is really you, just, just tell me to come. Now, you could say Peter was just as crazy as a bat to try to get up there and walk on the water. But it was faith that made him do this. You remember when they, the fishermen, these were fishermen by trade. There were no jack legs. They were fishermen. Had all night long sought to fish. The morning, they came back discouraged, cleaner than nets. And Jesus said, after he finished talking to the group, brethren, launch out into the deep. Cast your net on the other side, the right side. So Peter, just like we said, Lord, you know, I don't mean no disrespect, but uh, we, we, we're not jack legs. <laughs> we're not amateurs. We, this is our life. This is our livelihood you're talking. But he has just enough to say, but nevertheless, at your word, I'm going to let down the net. It was only when he put his fleshly reason aside that he saw the miracle of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I tell you another one, Nathan, Naaman the Syrian. There he was, had leprosy. So that he heard about a little maid that there was help in Israel. There was a prophet in Israel who could help him. So he, he brought some of his army. He went to, uh, looked up the prophet and prophet was in there and so he was a great man so he came and thought that the prophet's gonna come and just wave all over his body you know just <laughs> but the prophet sent his servant go ahead and tell him wouldn't even come out of the house <laughs> this was a great man look at somebody said sometimes pride might get in the way so there he was he said, man, I swear, he don't know who I am. I thought for sure the man would come out of the house and just, you know. <laughs> There's a little humble servant say, my Lord. I don't mean no harm, but can I say this? He said, now if, if the prophet had giving you a hard sign that you do it. Wouldn't you have done it? Yeah, I guess I would. See, you know, he gave you a simple thing. Oh, all right, let me try it. He goes down to the water and he dips. And the miracle came. It's the same God. It's the same God we're dealing with somebody. There was a man who had a withered hand. Jesus goes into the sanctuary and he says, stretch out your hand. The man can say, uh, uh, dummy, can't you see I can't stretch my hand out? Uh, why, are you, why are you telling me to do stuff I can't? Are y'all seeing how faith must operate? There must be faith in operation if we're going to see God operate. It takes faith because God is not mortal. And so the man in obedience stretched out his hand to his amazement. The hand kept stretching until it became normal. Oh, y'all got to hear what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're not dealing with some ordinary person here when we're dealing with God. We're dealing with God. We're dealing with God. 
And the Bible says what's impossible with man is most, it's possible with God. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And then he says, Paul said, he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ask. Now, or think. Now, if I can think it, he can do above it. Y'all hear what? That's the Bible, right? If I can think it, that means he can do far beyond that. That's good. He want to stretch us, y'all. He want to stretch us now. So I'm wrapping it up now. Yes. Are you ready to stretch your face? Yes. There's some situations that we've been in for so long. But let's pause now and say, you know what, Lord? That man of God telling the truth up there. I'm going to believe you. How many ready to believe God for something different? Come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, I just want to thank you. You're so good. My God, you're good. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Glory. Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. Now, Lord, there's some situations you got to fix. We're going to trust you. We're going to trust you. I want to do something, y'all. Can we just stand for a moment? I don't want you, anyone to try to be embarrassed and, you know, that there's an invisible God in here who loves us so much. And all they want to do is do us good. The Bible says he upholds all things by the word of his power. Everything was made by him. Everything living that was made was made by him. And everything was made for him. Are you with me? So if there's anything that you need to surrender to the Lord, just do it. It's you and him, right? It's just you and him. Nobody has to. you talk to God about. But maybe there's been a lot of long-term selfish prayers trying to get God to do something. And maybe God has been trying equally and long to get us to do something. I, I don't know. Now, I'm not saying that's the problem. But if it is, Today, today, let's individually and say, Lord, I want to do your will. I want to do your will, not mine. And if you're here and you say, preacher, you know, I, I, I can identify with this being a little upset with God because sometimes my, the tone of my speech gave, it, gave me away. I kind of had a little God-directed anger and I, I, I didn't realize it until somebody pointed it out. But the good news is there's freedom. There's freedom in God. And all he wants He can heal the body. He can unclutter the mind. He can give us peace. He, he can open doors that's been closed. He can make a way where there seems to be no way. So Father, here we are now. We precious word and I openly admit something that everybody knows there's nothing I can do for your people nothing but I know that in your
understand as you flow through us today. Somebody can get help because of you. That's my wife to come. Send the help that comes from your throne. We're going to pray for the TV audience first. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray for the, those that are watching by way of television. We pray the release of God's divine love and power on those that are watching. You feel the pain. You see the sorrows. Ignite faith in the hearts today. That as they hear your precious word, something will take place. And that life that comes through Jesus will grant them the victory. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. If someone has a back problem and God is, God is healing you of that back problem, just go ahead and give him thanks. Yes, you've been suffering with that back pain. Just tell him, God, I've received it now. God's healing you by his spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for those. Oh, yes, somebody's, somebody's burden is being lifted right now as you heard the word of God. Satan has been playing a lot with your mind concerning your identity. God says you're chosen of God. And the stamp of authenticity is upon you by the Holy Spirit. Receive now and lift your hands toward heaven and bless the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Someone has been praying for their marriage. And God said, you see your repentance. But you have agreed with the error of your ways. And God said, now he's going to intervene. And he's going to turn it around for his glory. The Lord said, rejoice. Rejoice. Hallelujah. 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 For I'm working it out for you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God some thanks in the house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.